Yeah, hello everyone. I'm uh, Philip Christmann. I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute in uh, Germany in Saarbrücken. And uh, this is a joint work together with my two supervisors, Rishi Raj Saharoy and Gerhard Weikum, uh, who have also been at the Max Planck Institute uh, for Informatics in Saarbrücken, in Saarbrücken at the time of this work. So uh, I would like to introduce our new benchmark uh, for heterogeneous question answering named COMPMIX in this talk. So let's start with what I mean by heterogeneous question answering. So imagine different um, factored questions by end users like who was fouled before the first penalty in the 2022 FIFA final or Argentina's ball possession in the same uh, football match. Actually, QA systems have to tap into very different types of information sources to be able to answer these types of questions. The first one requires more context that is typically not present in structured information sources such as tables or knowledge bases, and thus you have to likely tap into textual sources for answering this question. On the other hand, the second one taps into numeric data that is typically more uh, likely to be present in uh, information sources such as tables. Further, there are also questions like which team was behind by two goals, but still won a FIFA final that requires access to different types of information sources. So in this case, the table and the knowledge base. The table could, um, for example, provide a list of all FIFA World Cup final winners, and the knowledge base could provide um, the scores of the respective finals. So we make a claim, or in general, um, there's, um, uh, there's a series of works that tries to um, propose QA systems that operate over heterogeneous sources as a result to um, integrate multiple such information sources in the first place and to enable a broader answer coverage of the QA system. Another um, application is also to leverage the answer redundancy. So for some questions, the answer might also be there in multiple sources and you would like the QA system to actually account for that and boost their internal confidence. Existing benchmarks that have been used for heterogeneous QA, however, are typically not human-generated. They merely span two information sources and are also so domain-specific, like in the finance domain or sports domain only. And as a result of that, um, existing methods for heterogeneous QA typically actually considered a source-specific benchmark, such as for KBQA or TextQA, and then artificially weakened one of the input sources, say, dropping 50% of the knowledge base, which is not really a realistic assessment of the quality of the QA system. To this end, we released a CompMix dataset with uh, crowdsourced questions. Um, it spans four different types of sources, so the knowledge base, Wikidata, and uh, text tables and info boxes from Wikipedia. And we also cover five different domains, uh, books, movies, music, TV series, and soccer. The questions are collated from the ConfMix uh, conf mix data set, which was a data set for conversational QA, but these are um, completed questions that we release here. So the key statistics, we um, collected 9,400 questions with uh, roughly nine words per question, Answers are quite short, so entity-centric with roughly two words. Um, we have, or we cover 5,400 different entities and um, also 2,500 are uh, long-tail entities, so have less than 50 KB facts, which um, also language models, for example, typically struggle with. Um, some complex phenomena we cover in our data set are comparatives, like which movie is longer, uh, superlatives, like who scored the most number of goals, uh, ad hoc queries like author of the book, um, but also temple questions um, like who was the kit manufacturer in this time period. Um, others are count uh, or ordinal questions, and of course we also cover a series of um, simple questions. Um, from the user annotations, we investigated how the uh, users actually detected the answers to their questions, and in general, Integrating a single information source is not sufficient, as you can see from this uh, result here. So you would merely get an answer presence um, in these sources of 30% uh, or so. If you integrate two of the information sources, you can already get 
uh, much higher recall and um, of course integrating all of the heterogeneous sources allows you to um, also significantly boost the answer presence. We were also looking into answer redundancy, so we measured for each question how many of the different information sources contained the answer to the question, and we found that uh, leveraging an answer redundancy, so if multiple sources point towards the same answer, can make uh, quite an impact. So um, for many of the questions, more than 50%, the answer can be found in um, at least three of the information sources. Finally, we also conducted some experiments. We uh, used generative LLMs, uh, so GPT-3 in this case, Instruct GPT, um, and also a set of heterogeneous QA methods that um, have been around. We um, measured different metrics. We will focus on precision at one in this um, talk. And uh, altogether, none of the, the methods um, out, or was able to answer more than 50% of the, the questions. Um, including the, the large language model that we uh, tested on. Um, so in general, we make a case for uh, this to be a quite challenging test bed um, for future work in this direction. Um, we also wanted to highlight some of the failure cases for which none of the methods was able to answer these. So um, who played as adult Pi Patel in Life of Pi movie? This is, for example, quite challenging because they are two different, there's a notion of a child Pi Patel and an adult Pi Patel, and you have to also tap into different types of sources, the textual and the structured sources, to be able to answer these. Um, we would also briefly like to um, go through some desiderata that we have internally of how a heterogeneous QA system should look like. Of course, it should integrate heterogeneous sources in the first place, but we also um, would, would um, like suggest to ground the answer to specific evidence, which is in contrast to what uh, large language models typically do. And finally, provide traceability of the provided answer such that the user can also tell where the answer comes from. Um, one example of that um, is the explain method, the demo is also available, that was developed at our um, research institute. So um, here we would not only present the end user by um, the final answer, but also with the internal system interpretation and uh, supporting evidence coming from different types of information sources um, that the answer was derived from. Um, yeah, the da data set comp mix is available on our website and can also be integrated from the Hugging Face datasets library. Um, in the interest of time, I would only briefly go uh, through the actual data, so we provide a question, but also a set of metadata like the domain, uh, the question entities in the data uh, in the question, and also the answer as text, uh, canonicalized to Wikidata, uh, and we also provide the, the respective answer source that was used by the crowd worker. So to coming to the key takeaways of this talk, we proposed uh, or released a new comp mix data set for heterogeneous QA with 9,400 questions. The questions are generated by humans, so are more natural than in existing data sets. Um, integrating heterogeneous sources is inherently required, and existing methods merely answer 50% of the questions correctly. We also um, have a leaderboard on our um, webpage, and the uh, data set has all been used already in recent work. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions.